Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to section 3 of our Cucumber Visenium course. And in this video, we are going to be talking about Cucumber Ford Test Runner. Alright, so let's get started. So let's all help to save tree water and energy to save our motherly planet Earth, which is one of our responsibility for our future generations. Cucumber Forerunner for the parallel execution. So Cucumber Four runner by default support the parallel execution which is really a great news it has come as a wake at least the feature has been released like an year before but not a lot of people are really using that the reason is because there are so many complexity many people have made within their own framework to make their code not executable with the parallel execution so the parallel execution support that you can see in here is a screenshot exactly taken from the Cucumber 4 block itself. It says Cucumber JVM now supports parallel execution of pickle across threads. And they also ask us to see some documentation. Well, I'm not going to be talking about that. While executing in parallel each thread will have its own separate test contest. If you're currently using static variables, please note that. If you're currently using static variables to share state between steps please refactor to use dependency injection first. And this is something that we have already discussed a lot in our advanced framework development with Selenium Java course. And again, this is not the basic course. It's in the advanced series. We spoke about that. We also refactored our code to use the context injections, threadings, and separate state threadings, which is available within the advanced framework development with Selenium Java course. So please go ahead and watch there where we have discussed about that a lot. And even this particular feature that we're going to be talking about, the parallel execution in Cucumber JVM, which is nothing but Cucumber 4, is also only supported if you have all those infrastructure in place. The current basic course that we have right now actually does not really have those infrastructures because we have also used static variable a lot in this particular repo. And even if we try to execute the parallel execution, it is going to throw you an error. But now the question comes is why well, I'm really talking about that while our current code base is not going to be supporting that. Well, the reason is because this is one of the feature which Cucumber 4 has really brought that and it is very important that we all should be aware of this particular feature and that's the reason because this is an upgrade section you should be knowing all these new feature which has been incorporated in Cucumber 4 and that's the reason this particular video actually address this particular feature as well. We'll quickly write some of the few codes in our current test runner, but the code, as I said before, is not going to execute parallelly. It is going to throw you some error, but just to make you aware of this particular feature, we are going to be talking about that. So for that, I'm going to quickly flip to my IntelliJ IDE. All right, so as you can see, this is the same project that we were working in our previous video, and we are now in here within our test runner.java file. So this testrunner.java file has not changed drastically from the day we released this particular course, except that because during the upgrade, there was nothing called plugin and we just recently added that. This is the only new change which has been happened uh, from the day we released this particular course. But now there is one more change that's gonna happen is the execution of the scenarios in parallel. And as you can see that we currently have two scenarios and if we want to execute these two scenarios in parallel, we either have to do so many things behind the scene or we have to somehow write our own logic to make this execution happen. But the good news with Cucumber JVM or the Cucumber 4 is the new support of the execution of scenarios in parallel. And because we already are using the test ng as our test execution engine, and we already have the test ng.xml file for doing the particular current execution, it's very easy for us to bring in this particular execution using our own data provider. So as you know that we already have something called as a data provider tag within our test ng. So if you're not aware of the data provider tag of the test ng, as you can see in here, you can just go to the Google Chrome and I'll quickly show you that. So data provider test ng. And if you go to the test ng documentation and just search for data provider, and you can see that we have something called as a data provider tag. 
So it says that the marks a method to supply data for a test method. The annotated method must return an object array and you can see that it returns you a two dimensional array where each object array can be assigned the parameter list to the test method. The at test method that want to receive the data from this data provider needs to use the data provider name equals to the name of this annotation. So this is very important because you're going to be using this particular name of the data provider, you should be using it. And again, we have discussed a lot about this particular data provider, using that within test method and using it to supply the data within the test method in our advanced framework development with Selenium Java course. We are going to be replacing that particular course as well as a new section, as a new upgrade. So we'll be discussing a lot about that in our that course, not at least in the basic course, but because we are going to be seeing this particular feature in the basic course as well, I'm going to be talking about that in here just to quickly show you how to use this particular data provider of the test ng. So all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write an object and as I know that it is going to return as a two dimensional array. I'm going to write something like a scenarios because it's going to be running a scenarios and I'm going to return a super dot scenarios for us. So basically I'm going to return this particular object to the super class of this test runner, which is going to be executing this particular code. And also I need to override this guy. But as of now, if I try to execute this particular piece of code, it is going to execute this particular code just in single thread, which is not going to be in parallel basically, because I have not mentioned anywhere as a parallel execution. So now if I try to execute this particular piece of code with the test ng, you can see that it is going to open, uh, it's going to run one scenario at a time and it's executing the second scenario. You can see that it has been executed, right? So let me just close this guy right now. And now, in order to make the parallel execution to happen, I'm just going to open a parallel. And you can see that this is a new method which has been introduced to set you to true or false. So if you set this to true right now, it is going to execute these two scenario in parallel. And again, guys, word of caution, because we have already used statics in many places this particular code is not going to execute in any sense so if i try to execute this particular piece of code you can see that now it's going to run two scenarios same time which is awesome and you can see that two browsers are executing but one browser has successfully executed and another browser has not did anything uh, the reason is because if you come all the way down it says that there is a stale element reference exception and the element is not attached to the page document. The reason is because we have used a static web driver, static pages, static extension reporting, and many static stuff within this particular code. And this particular code is never going to execute in parallel. So in order for executing this in parallel, you should set this particular guy uh, to use non-static objects or either you should use the pico container to pass the objects across the step definitions. So what I'm gonna do is, just for checking in the code, I'm just gonna uh, put this guy as a data provider, uh, like that. And I'm gonna command this particular piece of code. I'm just gonna say for parallel execution support, which is not going to work for our code. So this is the one that you're going to be seeing within our GitHub repo. So I'm going to check in this particular piece of code so that you should see the whole changes that we have discussed so far within our GitHub repo. So this is how we can actually work with Cucumber 4 upgrade with our current test framework that we have written. And again, guys, for more updates and more features and more new changes, you should look to the advanced framework development with Selenium Java course where I have discussed a lot detail about the new changes that we have discussed over here, which are like missing features that we have not discussed here in the basic course at least, but in advanced course, everything is covered. So that's it guys. This is how we can upgrade our Cucumber from Cukes version 1.2.5 to Cucumber 4 version 4.7.2. If there is any new change going to happen, this particular course is going to be upgraded as well along with the advanced series. And once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.